I've been using this setup for over four months now on my phone and on my computer, so when I go shopping, I know what I need to buy. And this isn't to say this is how to do it, it's just one way of managing food in sort of like an automatic way inside of Obsidian. So I've created a demo vault called Food Tracker. Now mine looks pretty much the same, it's just got more information in. And what I've got here is a canvas view. So for those unfamiliar with Obsidian, this is a canvas file. If I zoom in, you can see this is a file, it's a serial file. So when I control click, this is the actual file inside of Obsidian that you'd write in. So you'd write all your information in for the recipe, etc. inside of there. This is a canvas. So it allows you to add cards, which is what this is. This is a file card. It's an actual file inside of the Obsidian Vault, which is the Food Tracker Vault folder. And these colored things are groups. So when you right click, you can create a group. And if I zoom out, you can see I've got blue groups, which represent the days of the week. So Monday through Sunday. And then I have three different sort of times of day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I actually don't have breakfast. I have tea instead. So lunch, dinner, tea, but you can change this and add to this in any way you want. But the reason I like this is every week I can look in here and, and drag things around. So let's say I want that one over there, one, that one up there. Uh, and then move this around. I haven't got many things in here as an example vault. And as you can see, I've got cereal, fruit, salad, and roast. Obviously, you'd have more food than that. Uh, but these are meals. They are meal files. So when I go into them, you can see I've got a little scroll at the top. And these are meals with ingredients in. And when I have one of these meal files in a blue group, so on a day, it means that there is a day for this meal. So if we come down here, it says a day, Monday, Saturday, they're all the days. So they, if I move this over, they are all the different days that fruit salad appears. So fruit salad's there, uh, it's on the same day twice. That's kind of silly. So let's just move that around. You can see now fruit salad is on Monday and Tuesday, Monday and Tuesday. There's also Friday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday so, uh, is pretty much every single day. Yeah, Friday, Thursday, Saturday, and then Sunday is there. So if there is a meal in my meal plan week group canvas thing here, it will show inside of the file property, which means data view can find it. And that automatically creates this list. So because the fruit salad meal has a day, there is a day in the week that I'm using it then it's going to show me the ingredients and fruit salad at the moment just has banana and apple and you can see inside the shopping list it shows me whether i have it or whether i don't that says stock yes or stock no so if i click on this icon by banana it gives me all of the property information for ingredients so this is an ingredient class because it's an ingredient file and then it says stock do i have it yes uh, if i don't then i take it off and it says false so yes or no do i have it and that's what's being shown here inside of the stock Originally stock was numbers, but I couldn't be bothered to update it every time I ate something or measure things out. So it's just, do I have it? Yes or no. Do I have enough of it? Yes or no. And because it's only a week, normally I can figure that out by myself. But if we come back into the ingredients, you can see we've got bought cost. So that's how much I spent on the thing. Bought size, which is how much I actually bought. In this case, we've got apples. So I buy a pack of six apples. Maybe it's eight apples. Uh, and then I have a portion size, which is how many I typically have. So I'll have one apple at a time and if I buy six, then I can calculate potential meals, uh, and that's a formula, so it calculates six, and then I can say cost per meal, and then that's gonna say 0 0.25. So I know each apple costs around 25p for meal, and I can use that number for the meal, so I can work out if I'm having apples and bananas, the fruit salad would cost, so I can come into the fruit salad. This is a recipe class, the ingredients are banana and apple, it's on those days, and the cost, if I calculate that, is 68p, because what it's doing is looking at the banana, and you can see that's 43p, and then it's looking at the apple, and that's 25 p and that's being added together to make 68p if i go down to milk let's calculate that one calculate that one you can see at the bottom there's also cost and this is an object inside of metadata menu and when i click here we've got shop one shop two you can add as many as you want and this helps me keep track of the expenses and the costs of different things in different places so shop two maybe it's one pound fifty and then in shop one it's 145 and then if I come back you can see 145 is the bought cost but I can keep track of however many shops there are so if I'm going into three four different shops that all sell the same thing I can see prices and see if prices go up 
or down. And because you can use Obsidian on your phone, all of these numbers are in the shopping list when I'm looking around shopping. I don't have to go looking. I don't have to remember how much it was in one shop or another shop because it's all written inside of Obsidian on my phone. So looking at the shopping list, I can see there are things that I need. Now I could use just this as a shopping list and go through, but what I do is push this button at the top and this creates a shopping list. So you can see shopping list has now appeared in the bookmarks because this is a quirk with Obsidian. If you bookmark a file, so this is the shopping list it's created. There's all the ingredients that I needed. And then if I delete the file, so I'm gonna use a hotkey delete it, it's now disappeared from the bookmarks. But the bookmark file has been saved. So when I push this button again, it creates a shopping list file. So you see it's been created here inside of the main vault and now it's automatically been bookmarked because that's the name of the file. If I delete it, I've deleted the file, it disappears from bookmark, but if I create it, you can see it appears again, which is a nice little quirk of Obsidian bookmarks. So let's quickly compare the list. We've got apple, broccoli, apple is there, broccoli is there, then chicken, carrot, potato, all there, and then we've got salt down the bottom, and then we've got popcorn kernels as well. And if I go from the shopping list to the other side, you can see I've got all of the recipes. So these, I've only got five in here, but these are the five recipes I have. The cost is calculated from adding up all of the ingredient prices, and you can see ice cream is here. There's no cost at the moment, but I have two different ingredients, which I don't have. So I can double check that. I can prove that I don't have it. See, it's, it's not there. It's empty, which is the same as it being false. So it's false, but that doesn't appear on the shopping list. And that's because the meal, i.e. ice cream, the meal isn't inside of this canvas. So the ingredients aren't on my to need shopping list, which means they're not added to my shopping list when I create it. When I want to add something, I can push control N on my keyboard and it gives me a list ingredient or recipe. So let's add ingredient. Let's say salt and vinegar crisps, new ingredient, bread, new ingredient, butter, then new recipe, toast and crisps. If I come over to the recipes, you can see we've got toast and crisps. That's a new meal that's just been created. At the moment, there's no ingredients. So I come into the ingredients. Let's click on here, butter, bread, salt and vinegar crisps. I tick that. Now all three of those are linked. It's not got a day because it's not inside of the meal plan. The cost, let's calculate, it's gonna be zero because we don't have any costs in any of those ingredients, but now it's an option and that was all really quick and easy to do. There is a template link down in the description below. I will go through now how it works on the back end for those curious. So going into the settings, we've got the commander plugin and this is only being used to add the button at the top right for the shopping list. And what that's doing is letting me add the quick add shopping list template. So if I go down to quick add, we have a multi, which is new. So when I push control N, it brings up the ingredient or recipe dropdown, both of which if I go to the settings, have the ingredients template and then ingredients folder. And then for the recipes, the same, just the recipe template and the recipe folder. But the shopping list, when I click on this, what this is doing is adding the shopping list template and it's always going to be that shopping list name so we can so we can manipulate the bookmarks option in the top left of course you can do that just by having a shopping list file linked somewhere then of course i'm using data view for all of the queries making sure i have the javascript queries enabled because i use metadata menu for all of these class settings and the main meal planning group canvas stuff is done with metadata menu which will go into depth a little bit later. And then we've got the plugin update tracker. This is just so there's a tick box to say, yes, you need to update the plugins. So people that do get the template can get the updated version. And then templater, which is how I'm generating that shopping list. Going over to the folders, we have the templates. So in the ingredients template, it's completely blank with words, but it has all of these properties automatically added. These buttons are done by metadata menu. These ones are done. And then you can see the actual values inside of Obsidian. So if I tick this, it's gonna be on, tick this, it's gonna be off. I can plus, and then it brings up the metadata menu options. If I go into the recipe, same thing, just this is the recipe class. You can see by the different icons. So we've got orange because there are formulas in here that need to be refreshed and red because there is a formula in here that has an error. There's an error because there's no ingredients in here. And if I open up the ingredients folder, you can see this purple, purple, these ones have been completed. These ones still have formulas that need to be updated. And then if I go to recipes, it's showing the same thing with the colors. So purple means you're all good. Orange means there's a formula that needs updating. Red means there's an error. 
But when we go to the shopping list template, this was kindly uh, donated to me <laughs> by Davos, who's in the Obsidian Discord and is in the Discord that will be linked in the description if you have any questions. And what this does is it basically creates a list going through the from, so going through my recipes folder, then where there is a day, so things that are only scheduled in with that day field from metadata menu, then it's looking for any ingredients that isn't stocked so where the stock is not there and then it's creating a list with tasks and what that means is when i'm on my phone i just get a load of tasks that i can tick off when i'm out shopping the two orange queries on either side i actually have more than this in my vault but inside of these queries these are just put inside of this file and then when looking into the queries you can see it's from recipes where day and then it's got these stuff at the top which is basically showing look for the recipes show me the stock, and then show me the ingredients in a list down below. So banana and apple related to fruit salad, brown flakes and whole milk related to cereal, etc, etc. And the recipe even simpler, remove the ID and then add the ID back in with a file link, call it recipe, then show me the cost, show me the ingredients and only show me from recipes. So it's going to show all of those recipes. So if we open up the folder, you can see there's all the recipes. If I hover over, you can see six files, there's six recipes, there's the cost and there's the ingredients. So getting into the metadata menu stuff, we have the ingredients class if i click on the icon it brings up the table view which i'll go through in a future video because there's been lots of updates with the plugin if i go to file class fields these are all of the fields inside of the ingredients class if i click on any of the ingredients you can see there's the list of fields the main difference being cost is an object so cost is only shown sort of like the top level cost is only shown inside of this model whereas inside field class you see shop one shop two and the rest which you can see by clicking on go to cost fields and there's the field. So you can see Apple doesn't have anything in there. So I can click on this button, which adds both those fields into the file. And inside of Obsidian, because the core default properties don't have this option, it just shows you everything here. Uh, what that looks like in the source mode is this. So it says cost, then shop two, shop one, because they're the objects, they're the fields available at the moment. It's just going to show it like this inside of default Obsidian, which is fine because I do all of my editing through here anyway. Uh, let's just say that there isn't any stock, so that's just something to be aware of. But if I go into some of these formulas, I can click on the edit button. You can see this is what the formula does. It can look complicated if you're not familiar with JavaScript, but what it's doing is it's mathing, essentially putting the thing into a number, which means the obsidian can see it as a number. It's rounding and then it's rounding the bought size field and the portion size field. And then I'm doing some rounding of my own. So times by 100, divide by 100, rounds to 0.2 decimal places, so pennies. And then the round gets rid of any recurring number. So if it's 0.333333, it just says 0.33. And as you can see, cost per meal is literally the same formula. The only difference is instead of it saying bought size, so current bought size, size it says current bought cost and the bought cost is this number field here bought size being this number field here and then potential meals is actually the other formula property so if i go down to bread quickly at the moment you see cost per meal and potential meals if i refresh this it says nan because there's no numbers to use bought cost let's say 60p bought size let's say there's 20 slices and then portion size let's just say i have two slices now if i try and calculate cost per meal it says nan because potential meals doesn't have a value so i calculate potential meals first then i calculate cost per meal if like me you try and push the button too fast or you don't let metadata menu update itself what you can do is you go to the file so to the bread file then control p formula and then it says update active file formula fields if you push that button it will then update the formulas so you can see it's 0.06 so it's 6p per meal moving over to the recipes this is the recipe table now i actually have a view for this so this is the recipes view because metadata menu has an updated thing that's going to come out soon which is what i'll use this for and it's also a saved view so this is the one it defaults to but if you want to see everything go none and then it just shows you everything uh, so let's display filters and then show the day and now you can see all the information you can add filters and sorts and loads of other stuff in this table view but that's not what this video is about if i go to the file class fields you can see we've got the day canvas group field 
The cost field, which works pretty much the same as the other formula field, if I come in, it does look much more complicated, which is why I've put the template link in the description. This is actual code, which the developer of the plugin kindly uh, gave to me. And this is serving like a roll-up, so it's looking for the ingredients field, which is the multi-link file field you can see here. It's then looking at the cost per meal field inside of the ingredient, so rolling up or fetching that information, looking up that information, and then doing a calculation and just adding it all together. Together. So if we click on zero, you can see the cost. If I calculate the cost, it says 0.21 because it's going to look at brown flakes. So if we control click, brown flakes cost per meal is 0.08 and whole meal is 0.13, which obviously added together equals 0.21. So that's the formula field. But when we go into the day field, so I'm going to go through the settings this way this time, you can see the field name, day, and then I'm giving it a canvas to look at. So the meal plan canvas is the only canvas inside of this vault, but that's the canvas I'm telling the field to look at and then only match with the blue group. So tick. And because all of the days are blue, it's only adding in the day and it's not adding in the time. So if you want to add in a time, you can come into the modal, push the plus button next to the recipe to add another field, time, then change the field type, go all the way down to update with groups in canvas. Then you can select the canvas, meal plan, let's say green, and now it's going to update the time. So if I push tick, you can see it's missing. Let's add that field. And now when I have a look at the time, it says breakfast, lunch, and dinner because it's on like most days of the week because I've put it everywhere. Uh, so that's how you can add a field in there, field property in there. And you can do this in lots of different ways, which is why I've left this open. I've experimented a lot with this, but I just wanted to get this video out. I've been shifting and changing the way I do this and I keep putting off this video. So I'm just gonna put this video out give you some inspiration and then probably in a couple of weeks time be like yeah it, it's changed it's different uh, and if you have any questions let me know in the comment section below or join the discord and we can discuss in there